specifically looking here at Excel because they have the option now, like deciding where does this Jarvan go. I have a feeling it's going to be in the jungle here for Kajal to give him some of that early playmaking potential. Where would you think Silas is going to end up? Febivan or Soez's hands? Because we have seen him flexed a couple times. I like it much more in the mid lane. I think that you can avoid a lot of potentially rough early game matchups by just walking mid, using your shield to sort of clear away the waves and then rotate like Nemesis was playing in that last game. And with the Rise Band away, I think maybe that lends a little bit of additional credence to that. Something we've expected as somewhat of a, a pick into it is sure. the option I'll say with. Um, all right, Irelia finds herself in the band pool along with Karthus in phase two here for XL, and the final ban is going to be locked in now for Misfits shortly. With that Olaf, by, an, by the way, gives me an indication that they're expecting the Jarvan to go top. Yep, and here, if I'm over on the side of Excel, I'm looking at a few different champions here in the mid lane for special. I think the Zoe would be fantastic here to sort of follow up some of the longer range engage here of the Galio plus the Jarvan, but also Yasuo a pick that he has liked in the past that could really benefit from some of the knockups here that Excel have put together. And of course, the Renekton ban away because expect destroyed SK Gaming yesterday on that pick. So huge respect, Ben, in the final phase here of the phase two. And of course, Syndra now locked in for special. Yeah, the safe mid lane pick here for special because Excel, they're going to save counter pick for expect now. This is the player that sort of, you know, alongside Cajal, they will draft to give him early game advantages. They want him to be able to win inside of his lane. I mean, just look at the picks that he's played recently. It's been the likes of the Renekton, the Kennen, the Yorick, even the Jarvan a few games ago. So they're going to see here now where the Silas is going to go because it's likely going to be top now for Soaz. Yeah, definitely anticipate that. I'll Option. We are looking now for a jungle pick for Maxlaw to confirm the draft. And I like some of the options. Silas can steal the Cataclysm if he's going toe to toe with this Jarvan. And a slightly more early game option here in the Rex side. So Misfits team composition is kind of screaming one, two items and get ahead and get oh, ahead. Oh, yeah. Early. This is a scary early mid game comp here from Misfits. I think for Nectin, or sorry, <laughs> the Rex Eye is so good at generating early game pressure alongside the likes of the LeBlanc. You can look for kills in this mid lane near the Syndra. You can also just go down bottom lane because Draven Morgana has so much damage. You just land one knockup, then you're bound for an eternity, and Draven is going to be able to cash in on some money. Well, let's see what the final ban. There we go. Nocturne now secured. Uh, I see a lot of tools that say fight, fight, fight on both sides of uh, the rift. So what do you make of the team compositions as a whole? Well, fight, fight, fight. I agree with you. But for Excel, they need to wait for level six. That's when they can maybe make some plays here with the Nocturne. Maybe you get that duo around this mid lane even. You have a lot of global potential with the Galio. Uh, Jarvan can even roam down and try to impact that mid lane because the best way to stop Han Sama and Gorilla from dominating the 2v2 is not actually by ganking them. It's by taking control over mid lane so you can bring many more members down to the bottom side of the map and punish that duo pushing up. All right, well, let's uh, keep an eye on if Excel can do it, because if any team is going to be able to have a, a jungle, have an impact in one particular lane, it is Kadrill that's going to do that. Excel Esports are looking for a 2-0 weekend, are looking for a 2-0 head-to-head over Misfits, and it can happen by shutting down Febivan and Hans Summer. Absolutely can here, Trevor. On the other side of things, Misfits don't want to go down easily. They heard the words of slow early game. Maxler's on the Rex eye and ready to make a difference. Yesterday, XL Esports took down SK Gaming. Today, my stats team ran the numbers and out of 10,000 simulations for the rest of XL's games, assuming they have 50-50 odds, 10 out of 10,000 scenarios get XL to playoffs. It is out of their hands. They need other teams to lose as well. But it starts by taking down Misfits Gaming today. It starts by picking up their first 2-0 weekend. And now we're going to be jumping into the game as Misfits will look to stop the bleeding, will look to even up some of that win-loss column and go into the last two weeks of the split in the thick of the playoff race. Oh man, I'm already liking what I'm seeing here. Off the bat, Misfits using the distortion to get into the enemy jungle now. While the rest of Excel actually crept in towards that tri brush. I'm almost expecting some cheese here at the start because they're trying to trade red buffs, it seems. And I'm going to tell you this because we haven't had a chance to discuss it. I hate the word cheese. It's a personal thing. I love creative solutions. I love ingenuity in game. And I would praise it personally. 
Now, you're allowed to call it cheese yourself, just don't do it with me. Look, I love cheese both on and off the riff, Trevor. <laughs> so I'm sort of an expert when it comes to this sort of thing. Oh, man, Excel, they want Gorilla. Dun, 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 dun! Gorilla gets caught out! Defensive oh. flash already! Summoning so heal has been used. Gorilla's running for his life. Mystic shot! First blood! Excel Esports! Oh, man, what a start here for Excel. Not only do they get the kill, but they're going to have control over the red buff now, and Maxlor is going to have to leave the side of the jungle entirely. What did it cost? One, two, three flashes on the side of Excel Esports for the flash and heal of Gorilla. Hans Summer, by the way, is running flash, teleport, kleptomancy, on Draven, question marks around that one, and with a first blood going to his opposition AD, the bottom lane's gonna be difficult. Yeah, it definitely is going to be, especially because you're supposed to be slamming with this Draven Morgana lane. You're supposed to be able to do a lot, and as towards the, the Kleptomancy mentioned from you, this is something we actually saw a lot on Draven in the past, and honestly, he used old Conqueror way better than he does the new Conqueror. Even though you see that a lot on melee champions, it's not so great for Draven. And the Kleptomancy, of course, he's gonna be able to just use pretty frequently by pressing his W repeatedly in lane because that cooldown resets whenever you pick up an axe. And uh, we'll see what Hunt Summer can do because he's in a disadvantage now in the bottom lane. Compliments of that first blood. And the question is, is that the kill that Tilt is made of? It's very early on into the game. It's given Kasing and Jeskla an early advantage, but importantly, Jeskla has not gone back to shop yet. So it hasn't equated into additional combat power in the laning phase. But you have to think about how these teams actually wanted to play the game because Misfits needed Maxlor to be packing around the bottom side of the jungle. I honestly think he would have gone for like Red Crab, Scuttle Crab, and then seen if there was an opportunity to go for a gank or just vertical jungle and divide the map up so he was on the bottom side. Now he's top lane and wants expect. All right, here comes Rex Psy, gonna unburrow, get the knockup on to expect defense. It's a flash from Soaz. Maxwell takes one shot. Maxwell takes two shots. It's a trade. One for one. Oh, no. Maxlor ends up going for the trade. It's still going to be a first blood over towards him. And some minions denied there for expect, but not quite as clean as we've seen so far today. Maxlor just a little bit late to use the flash there. Wanted to see if he could hold on to it, and it ends up costing him his life. And Summer stepping forward a lot, really trying to maximize these Klepto pack stacks rather. Kasing down to 100 HP, but take a look at Cajal. He's coming in from behind. Got double buff available. Dustbringer will tag into Gorilla. That's one auto from Hunter. A second. The tower shot comes out. This will help on Summer. He gets an early cash in on the passive. Jeskla misses Ooh. the mystic shot. Hans Summer will pick up blue buff, a kill, and back away. Yeah, and he's going to be able to teleport back into the lane as well. So almost a really rough situation there for the Misfits duo. But Hansama ends out, up outplaying and trading one for one. and. He's going to be able to TP back to lane, but he's still down a whole heck of a lot of CS. Okay, 9 CS to 27. The bottom tower has just lost a plate. But if we look at the gold disparity in this lane, it's 500 right now. Between Jeskla and Hans Summer, of course, Jeskla also farming up with that Klepto sitting on 1,600 gold. That is going to be a hugely powerful back for XL once Jeskla can, and he's going to complete that shortly. Yeah, and I just have to praise the early game here from Cajal and the rest of Expel to divide the map like this. Now notice, on some and Gorilla, as they should be, hard smashing in this two versus two, but Cajal knows there's no flash on towards Gorilla, so he can set up the fear now and let Jessica come in for the kill. Unfortunately, he steps a little bit too close in range of the tower. Hansama gets the kill and then has the clean dodge right there on the Mystic drop from Jessica. And hugely important, because of the teleport that Hansama's running, he's evened out that CS. The minion wave did not get denied to the tower. So he's clawed back up in terms of gold and CS, and now actually with a little bit of uncontested time, gets this first plate very, very low. May actually just be able to cash in, and he does. Even threatens a spinning axe auto underneath the tower, which uh, I thought was a little bold. Yeah, I mean, that was really impressive there from uh, Hans. I'm really good for him, at least, because he gets the solo money on that turret plating. Just knows he has Max Lord sort of waiting in his pocket in case Jeskla and the rest of Excel did want to go in, but now Misfits are more comfortable. They have the lanes, they have the junglers more specifically in a position uh, that they wanted them to be. Maxlor hovering around this bottom side. He doesn't know that there's a ward here in the river, so he's actually setting up to come from behind Kasing and Jeskla. This is something that a lot of Rek'Sai players will do because ganking on this champion is so unique. And now we'll pop on out, see what camps are up, and knowing that there's no camps available, expects Kajol to be on the top side of the map. Look at the mid lane as well. Febivin has already left. Special backed away and is now just getting to his tower to defend it. 
Kedril will get in, into place, and I, I really appreciate that Kissing and Jeskla respect the potential dive. They had all the information to work with, and they backed away in time, but it is costing plates. Yeah, I mean, the, the respect is definitely necessary, but unfortunately, with level 5 Kedril, they're not going to be able to make a play down here on this side of the map, and Misfits sort of got away with murder right there as Kedril pops over the wall. All right, here comes Kissing. He's going to look for the taunt. Ooh. Spell Shield's going to be on Gorilla. Hunt Summer forced to flash. Summoning Heal is available for Gorilla. It has been used. The tick away from Ignite. Hunt Summer's low. One more shot's all it's going to need. Not going to be able to land just yet. There's the Dust oh. Kadrill with the swag finish. Kadrill says he doesn't even need level, level 6. He's going to use the Blast Cone and make the plays happen himself. Very nicely done from Excel. And we continue to see them play around this bottom lane and just shut Hansam and Gorilla down. All right, is there a potential tower dive here? Now Gorilla's in trouble. He's running away from his tower. Kadrill's farming up Krugs. Hansam is going to make his way back. No teleport available. A Max Law impassive will sense out Kadril's positioning. And of course, with Kadril and Max Law both showing on the screen, talk just a little bit about this matchup and some of their stats. We'll get to that straight out of this replay. Yep, watch this again from Kadril. He doesn't know Frexai is in the area at this moment, but he says he doesn't care. He's going to be able to impact this lane first. And Gorilla uses a great black shield, but it's on to himself. And Hansama doesn't use the flash sooner to dodge away from that CC. You can't help but feel like there's some miscommunication. And then in this play, I mean, Gorilla does a great job of blocking the Mystic shots, but you can't quite block the Shadow of Darkness that comes out of Kadril. Now, I don't even know if uh, Hansama could have sidestepped it or not, but as I was uh. mentioning just before the replay, Kadril versus Max, so you can take a look at some of the kills plus assists at 15, as well as the kill participation. Notice the gigantic difference between Kadril and Max, or 82% kill participation at 15 minutes for Kadril. It really just keeps telling the story of how important he is to the team, and you can see it from plays like that down the bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, this guy goes ham in the early <laughs> game, and, and, and you can see it too, because it's not always that you see, you know, pre-level sick Nocturnes actually making plays work for their lanes, but it was very well set up from Kajol, who knew his bot lane was in a tough position, rotates down and ends up getting that kill for himself. And it's also just Excel just putting him in a good position to, to perform well in this match, because something we don't often talk about is actually the jungle matchup in terms of champions. And one thing that Nocturne can do is just actually trade pretty well against Rek'Sai, uh, you know, when they get into these skirmishes in the early mid game, which is not something that a lot of champions can save for themselves, because Nocturne just gets so much AD when he tosses down the Duskbringer. When he's sitting on that, yep. he gets a whole lot, and then the fear is very important in the 1v1. Plus a spell shield as well, and it's really a lot of tools that help him out. And you know, there's been so much action in the bottom lane. You can see the CS is now about even. Jeskla 201 got himself a fair item, you know, a fair number of items already. Looking at the mid lane, Merc Trade's picked up a Febivans LeBlanc. He's got the double dark seal, even on CS. And up in the top lane, Soez has been able to extend that CS lead despite some early trades. His Silas is now starting to pull ahead, and he's getting into a comfortable position. Yeah, Maxor waiting right here. He has the flash up. So even though Jeskla has the arcane shift, he's not entirely safe. XL do know that Maxlor is here because of the control ward and some nice vision in the river, so they know exactly whenever Misfits are trying to make this sort of a play. And actually because Maxlor was, was burrowed, he didn't even see the control ward behind him. So if he does go for a play down here, Expect can teleport and enter into the fight. Kedril's got Paranoia available to him, looking at the minimap. Remember, Galio's not level 6 Oh, he yet. doesn't even see Kedril it! Kedril didn't spot him! But the dragon... He's going to be moving away because, of course, as soon as Maxlaw burrows over the wall, the dragon will go after the nearest opponent or the nearest champion to attack. And in that scenario, it was Kadril. So if Maxlaw wisely backs away, and we're seeing a roam now from Soaz towards mid lane. Yeah, Soaz going to walk over a ward, though. So Febvin is trying to trade in mid lane, and Soaz doesn't have an ultimate just yet. He's probably going to try to pick up the Syndra one, if any, but now has to go back and pick up the top wave. I do want to bring up Excel's vision control at the moment, though, because they have a lot of forward control wards. I mean, just look inside of this river. They're setting up protection because they've seen Misfits trying to roam down bottom lane so frequently. That control ward up above mid lane as well is very important because it makes sure that Special can't be sort of collapsed upon from this area of the map, where most of the time it's just going to be darkness for Excel. Well, let's see what happens with Special in this mid lane, because yesterday he played the Zoe into SK, if I recall correctly. 715, 33% damage uh, uh, share, 75% kill participation, and of course Special came in as a substitute for Exile, and he really stepped up yesterday, finding his feet, finding his groove. He's got the Syndra even on CS into the LeBlanc, 
and his ultimates can be game-changing into a number of very squishy targets. Yeah, I mean, he was definitely popping off yesterday, and that's why I was sort of a little sad not to see him go for something on the long the likes of that Zoe one more time. Right now, he's just trying to pair up with Kajol and take some more control himself. And actually, look at what Excel have done. They went for a reset down in bot lane because they knew the 2v2 wasn't going super great when they don't have jungle pressure. So they want to play now for the Rift Herald while Hansama trades for plating down bot. All right, Febivin will find some chains in a special. Doesn't get the secondary proc. Rift Herald will be secured shortly. This should go Excel's way. Paranoia to deny some vision, and we've got ourselves a fight. Hunt Summers down in the bottom lane, though. He's pushing for the tower. Oh. Not gonna be enough for a kill. Maxwell's able to escape. Oh, the flag drag dunk! Here comes Excel's expect, and he gets himself one. So is running for his life. The tower doesn't even go down in the bottom lane. Yeah, because Jessica can just TP right back down there. Misfit started that one up or, or tried to contest any 4v5 situation without calling the TP in from Hunt Summers. Of course, once the darkness goes down, you cannot use that summoner spell, and XL end up getting away with everything. Man, 700 gold advantage for XL, 12 minutes. So as fancies himself a shot, jumps on top of Expect, no ultimate available to either top laner, and just the kit of Silas is obnoxious to deal with in that scenario. So he's uh, able to push Expect back for now. Yeah, and my favorite thing about that whole fight around the Rift Herald is so has actually had the paranoia. So when both Nocturnes press paranoia, neither of them can see anything. So neither of them can actually use the second cast of their ultimate, which ended up being pretty funny. Well, that's why nobody did, I guess so. Well spotted. Yeah. I'm actually going to be looking at this now. So there's the paranoia thrown down <laughs> from so <laughs> Everyone's bad. nearsighted. No oh one can move. Oh, my word. And you can see that right now, Hansama is pushing down to the bottom lane. He can't TP in for six seconds while that paranoia lasts. And a beautiful engage there from Expect. Excel were able to sort of divide Misfits. So Soaz was on the opposite side of the fight and turns almost into a five versus three there for Excel. Well, Excel Esports are at 13 minutes just ahead of the Misfits composition. And I think that's a very important sign when you consider Rek'Sai, Draven, Silas. This is a good, good position for XL to be in. And it's one that they now need to transition. I mean, a 3-0-2 Ezreal with, you know, a, a Tears stacking and Iceborne Gauntlet already completed. Jeskla is going to be terrifying to deal with over the next 10 to 15 minutes, and he's been activated much earlier thanks to some great plays from Excel and Kedro. Well, here comes a TP now from Hansama to get back into the bottom lane, and notice actually Expect on the minimap, walking all the way down from top into mid. They're going to crash the wave into the turret, pick up one plate here for Expect, and then try to maybe walk that into a Cloud Drake because they have everyone here perched around mid. All right, that's a stun onto Febivin. Paranoia will throw down the nearsightedness. That is being used by Kedral. Not going to get enough additional pressure onto the tower. While that's happening, Hans Summer and Gorilla will pick up the first tower of the game. Hans Summer secures out in the bottom lane. The tower plates have now timed out, but with the use of the Rift Herald, that's a tower kill in the mid lane. This will go the way of Excel. Soez manages to complete the TP before he's able to take down the top tower. It's a one-for-one -one trade. It is still control for the underdog's XL. Yeah, I mean, Soaz actually almost just died there because while he was TPing, the minions around him died. He was tanking tower and expect almost canceled that TP. So could have been a pretty dire situation right there for Soaz and the rest of Misfits. But even though you say XL have control, yes, they have control over the map, it would seem, but the gold is still relatively even. So let's look forward. What does XL need to do or what should XL be focusing on for the next five to 10 minutes? I think they need to really be looking for sort of the one four at the moment. What I mean by that is I want to see Kajol, Special, Jessica, Kasing sort of all around this mid lane trying to set up vision around an objective. To me, that would be the bottom lane turret or the top lane turret. Right now, you have a uh, Windrake down bot side. So I say set up in that southern quadrant of the jungle and use that pressure of the four man stack to try and create some sort of advantage because you have all of these fantastic ultimates to try and force engagement and while you can take things slowly i think you should be looking more often than not when those cooldowns are up and ready to use to actually set up the map for that type of a play okay um we'll see if they can because right now that cloud drake was just picked up by maxwell uh solo he's tried that several times this time we'll be left alone long enough to actually secure the objective he's got the proto belt got himself a haunting guys picked up for the time being Hans summer with the bloodthirster and a pickaxe continues to Play very forward, small CS advantage for Han Summer, and there's no big setups just yet by XL Esports, but Cajal's Paranoia will be up and available very, very shortly. I wondered 
if he was going to fancy some sort of dive in the top lane. Instead, it's going to be a fight mid. Scatter the weak will just block and dodge Febbim into the side. And you'll actually see both top lanes having a pretty big impact whenever they make this roam towards mid. Here goes Maxlor. All right, Maxlor. Void Rush is available to him. Not even going to get needed. Soaz has thrown down the paranoia. We'll be diving all the way forward onto Cadrill. The fear comes out. Defensive flash from Cadrill. That saves his life. So, so close right there. <laughs> Poor uh, Cadrill, rather, going down in that fight. Of course, Special just a few seconds left on that flash and it's a beautiful rotation there for misfits they got priority down in bottom lane they call so as to come on over and end up setting up a pretty nice play how much of a problem is it for excel that hunt summer seems to be uncontested in tower pressure he's been shoving 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 for 16 minutes and nobody's really trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe. well i mean i think it, it's it's less about Han Sama, the individual, than it is how these teams are playing the map. Because a lot of times Han Sama can go walk up, get the tower, but that's because Excel are doing things on the other side of the map. I think that was the first time where we saw they weren't actually doing anything else, and Han Sama went uncontested. But when Kajul is hovering around that duo lane of Jesslyn Kasing, that's when you see Han Sama sort of being pushed in and not allowed to sort of exert any pressure in the two versus two. And of course, talking about Hansama, he just backed away from that tower, uh, allows that cannon wave to just push a little forward. It means Jeskla needed to come up to answer. He's still doing very well. Two items completed on that Ezreal, getting towards two item spikes. Fair number of members, both Luden Echoes. Luden's Echoes are completed in the mid lane. And special, his flash was available for all of 12 seconds. Yep. Uh, literally instantly needs to go back. Febivin is hunting for a chance, and that's very, very proactive forward play from Febby. Not scared of the support, Galio. Not even a little bit. And right now, Soaz, I, I really like what he's doing. He's using the power of Silas to push these lanes to create pressure and really give Special a tough time in the mid lane. I also think that this Silas pick, even though it was taken so early on in the draft, is super useful here at denying Excel a lot of their opportunities. You can actually use the Nocturnal to make it so Kasing can't use his own. Well, let's find out what happens now in this bottom lane. Stopwatch has been used to buy some time. A little bit of a defensive play. Soaz is running for his life. He gets the steal, the hijack, the cataclysm, turns it back around. Ladies and gentlemen, so has Silas. Now Cajal's in trouble. Febivin's gonna lock him down with the chains. Kill Secure will be donated to Febby with one pitiful auto attack. And Misfits, with a, a very confident passage of play, are now in control with a thousand gold. Yeah, leads. they just read Excel like a book right there. They had control over the map, and Maxwell was just waiting right there the moment that Excel wanted to go in for the fight. Again, keep in mind that Expect goes right in alongside Cadle. All the damage gets blocked here by this good stopwatch, and now it's split. Cadle thinks, oh, I can't really commit because the rest of Misfits is on the way. But in this situation, you're just going to get run down and take out and you have to look at the rest of the map where's your team well Ezreal's walking top lane Syndra and Galio are getting pushed in mid lane because of the, the really solid pressure that Misfits applied just a few seconds ago so that play comes sort of out of nowhere and Misfits have the ability to just punish it and drop it dead oh such a difficult situation to be in stopwatch by Soaz gives Misfits another series of kills with all the time that Hans Sam has been farming up he got his eye edge Soaz just got the Leandri's torment just a reminder again, if XL lose this game, they are out of playoffs. They have to win this game to keep the hopes alive, and even then, it is such a difficult scenario. And for a long time, the, the, the early game and the early proactive plays, I was super, super on board. I was getting excited for XL. Now we're in this tentative part. Neither team truly has a significant advantage or control, and the next few minutes and the next few kills and objectives will heavily impact who wins this game. Exactly, and I think it was really interesting because Excel very clearly had a super solid early game plan. They knew exactly how to shut things down, but then once they got that lead, they didn't quite know how to convert. Now you see Misfits are the ones with control over the map. Now that they're breaking down this middle lane turret, it's gonna be so, so difficult for Excel to ever press forward because now there's no protection and they have to keep their flanks warded very nicely because we know Soaz and Maxor are always gonna be looking to sort of slip right in there and attack the back one. And it's such a difficult situation Situation. We could see Maxwell waiting in the wings, burrowed. He was able to threaten a Void Rush as well as spotting out enemies. Soaz was able to steal away the Galio ultimate, so that could be game-changing in a big team fight. Febivin's able to poke down Expect, and now XL are on the retreat. Mountain Dragon's up and alive, and Misfits will get control of the mid lane, take the tower, and now peel down the Drake. Yeah, I mean, XL, I like the, the idea from them trying to press down in towards the jungle, but Misfits do a good job 
sort of zoning them away, of, uh, poking them out, and now with a Mountain Drake, uh, Mountain Drake rather, at their back, <laughs> they're going to be able to use that to apply even more pressure towards this dragon. Because if we've, if we've learned anything from today, it's once a team gets an advantage and gets complete control over the Baron, what they're going to do is they're going to look to just sneak that away with a few members while the cooldowns of the blue trinkets, while there aren't wards on the sides of Excel. And the dragon, or the, the mountain drake, makes it so much harder, it shortens the window where Excel have to look for the vision because Misfits will just take it down firstly. Yeah, they've got a little damage to deal in. Obviously, the bonus stats now. That's a good dark binding onto Kasing, but there's no follow-up. And... Um, I, I watched an interview with Kasing fairly recently where he said that you know on XL we know how to play the early game. We we know how to play the laning phase and the mid and late game we're just struggling a little bit and, and I consider myself responsible as the captain of the team. It was something that I really loved to hear and to watch because there's self-reflection on that. They're going now in we now. need to see if Kasing can make the right calls to help Excel. That's the engage they wanted. Now Maxwell runs for his life, survives long enough to need the Cataclysm. But here comes the engage. That's a turnaround one for one thus far. That's another kill for Excel. They're being managing to do it. Feverman gets the double. That's more damage and more kills. And everybody is dying in the fight. So far, it's a three for three, but Febby and Hunt Summer are not done yet. Kasing will survive a few seconds longer before Febbivan takes him out. No mana on special. It is a matter of time before he gets hunted down. The ace for Misfits is on the cards as the adrenaline rush comes out. And X Special uses one loss, Scatter the Weak. Ender, can you finish this off? Yeah, well, Hansama's actually going to take care of that one for us, Trevor. Hansama gets the ace, the delayed quadra kill for the Misfits AD carry. And now my question for Misfits is, because Special's death was delayed for so long, he's actually 30 seconds desynced in his respawn timer to the rest of the, the players in this game, really. So Misfits have a power play. They have five members on the map, and I would love to see them walk over towards the back. I need to watch this replay again to see just how quickly it turned into Misfits' favor. I mean, look, we needed Excel to force an engagement and go right on in. But it's actually this Galliol that Silas is holding on to. He can re-enter this fight and buy so much space for Hansama. Look, no one can touch Hansama because of the way the terrain is right here. Expect can't quite get around the corner, can't pressure down onto the Misfits AD carry. And now he can just train you down because there's no mana left on special to fight back. It took so long to pick up the kill onto Max Law that Misfits we're just able to run down XL. Five kills secured, 5,700 wow. damage dealt in that last fight. And if you are a Misfits fan and you see a first pick Draven, you get nervous. But when you see a team fight like that and a recovery from the early game, now you start to get excited. Yo, that takes me back to 2018 Han Sama, right? The Draven Morgana lane we saw so frequently from this player. Now alongside Gorilla, finally once again having another one of those solid, solid performances. He came back last week, looked good, and now Misfits once again set up, poised for another very successful game. And a lot of credit to Soaz on the Silas as well. Crucial ultimates have been game-changing. He's used Paranoia's effectively. He used Cataclysm at the Dragon Fight. He's managed to use Galio Ultimate as well. And see if he can get a clean sweep and do one of each before the end of the game. Soaz is now pushing down to the bottom. He's picked up another Cataclysm. And Misfits, with their 3,000 gold lead, pushing Vision deep into Exile's territory. And it's now up to Exile to play from behind, slow the bleeding, and, and try to buy some time to get back into this game. Exactly, and you can just see how Misfits are waiting for Blue Trinkets to go down. They're actually going to be end up resetting right now, but Excel have no idea what's actually going on. So walking forward to clear these wards is always very inherently risky, especially when you see the likes of a LeBlanc on the opposite side of the map. The champions just sort of pop forward, quickly burst you down. The champion doesn't really play like an assassin. It's more like a poke mage that gets in your face and tries to burst a lot of your HP away. So Excel are going to have to watch out for that once they're inevitably forced back out of this river. And of course, immediately after this game, ladies and gentlemen, the match of the week here in the LEC, Origin versus Vitality, will be coming your way. New Turk and Cabo on your screen, and see how they step up. Right now, Dark Binding will pop Special's Spell Shield, but he'll be able to escape for now. The Banshees, oh. look at that damage onto Jeskla. Paranoia has been used defensively by Kajal and Misfits. They're on the hunt. Flash over the wall. There's the Cataclysm from Soaz as Silas. He manages to catch Kajal. Continues to chase forward. The Whirling Death will pop the GA. Misfits will land yet another Dark Binding. Febivin cannot find himself a kill, and nobody from Excel dies. And now Excel, specifically Kajal, is so chunked out now. 
the Misfits can actually walk over here towards the Baron. Keep in mind, they did take some damage themselves, and XL have an entrance in towards the Baron pit, but there's no jungler here for XL. This one could go down. All right, Special does have an ultimate available. If he can find a target, here comes Expect. He gets the Cataclysm follow-up from Kassin in the hero's entrance. Fabivan goes over the wall, but he's got no targets to fight. Kassin gets the taunt. This is the fight that XL needed. That's two quick kills at the cost of Special's life. There will be another oh, one oh, to Soaz. Fabivan's trying to do what he can, but he can't get through the CC. He can't get through the taunt. He gets one into Kassin. Finally, Febby goes down. Baron is stopped and XL are back. XL take the 4v5 and they slam Misfits inside the Baron pit. Now it's their turn to start up this objective. And with no teleport on towards Soaz, there is nothing that he or the rest of Misfits can do can to stop XL from taking down this objective. Unbelievable turn of events and a fantastic team fight that just brings all of the life back to the plucky oh. underdogs. I yeah, feel hate real to bad. See that. that feels real bad. And Wait that's, of second. course, the member that you really don't TV. want to watch. Oh, no! What is happening? All of a sudden, now there's uh, Cajal running for his life. Hunt Summers teleported in. He's got one. Jeskla died as well. Soaz gets a solo kill just as quickly as we celebrate. We trip and hit ourselves in the head with cake. Trevor, they just lost all of their Baron buffs right there. They got nothing for that. They got the gold, and that is it. They're going to lose the mid in here, but a turret. And they're going to lose the top turret as well, mid inner turret, correction. And just like that, I mean, oh man, the excitement, the chaos, the energy, it ends up costing XL. Special's going to take his blue buff, and that's just about it. I mean, just look at Soaz up here in the top lane. There's no one that can answer him currently. XL going to have to bring three members up here just to stop him from taking that turret down. But you see Hansama go right in! Oh my word, Hansama! Takes the unleashed power to the face, doesn't even care. Bloodthirster shield really stacking up high and helping him out. And the base has now just about been broken open. Six towers to Misfits. So as we sort of step back now, because the, I mean, the last five minutes have been absolute chaos here for XL. You have to focus. How do you win a team fight? And it's you have to kill Han Sama. And the start, they try to do it. But the, the Zonias comes in, and then the Black Shield is late on Kasing's taunt. Beautiful play there from Kasing to sort of lock down the Misfits AD carry. And once Draven is out of these fights, it becomes very difficult for this squad to sort of go toe to toe, especially when they've been getting beaten on by that Baron buff. So remember, XL, it's all about assassinating Draven and not letting Jeskla die to the Baron. Oh, so difficult to watch. Soez just runs up. The TP Draven comes in for a cleanup kill and this really, really hurts to see. Exactly, and they, they killed the Baron buff before Galio and Cinder respawn. So you have Baron on two members because Jeskla died. Expect dies there. Cable died before. Now they go in. Well, we're straight into another fight. XL are not done yet. They're trying to get something back. They will give themselves a GA pop, but it's uh, just a killer to Gorilla. True Shot Barrage comes out. Misfits are on the retreat. Just like oh. that. XL are trying to fight back. Cable goes down. Soaz stays alive a few seconds longer. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to ask a question. Will XL Esports win this game? Jump into chat and spam yes or no right now. XL are going to find themselves just some more pressure. Yes or no in chat? We're going to find out the answer in a moment. And the answer is an outstanding yes. If they can continue to kill Han Sama in these fights, the man's got no flash. He loses the GA in that exchange. And now it's XL's turn to take down all of these turrets to get more and more gold onto Jeskla, who is popping off. 31 kills in 30 minutes. XL give and take. We're going to head for behind. And if you guys are watching at home on Twitch or YouTube, spam in chat, yes or no, will XL win? The game is as even as it's going to get gold-wise. We've got another crazy replay, which started when we were in a replay. Yeah, we have to see how this happens. Look, it's the two carries of Misfits too far forward. Febivan can get out, because guess what? You're playing LeBlanc, but Draven has absolutely no chance here for Han Sama. And Excel just show up. They see the opportunity to go right on in. They lead with Cajal and then expect sort of slam dunk right on down and get three kills in that exchange. It has been a wild ride today in the LEC and the fans at home are getting behind XL. 64% of the votes saying yes, they will win. A little bit of recency bias in that action replay most likely, but it is something that XL have done. They got ahead early, they've bounced back from the mistakes, and maybe they are now in control of the rift. And I mean, I think all the fans right now are looking at these team compositions because do you favor a 
heavy team fight comp that can dive an immobile AD carry Han Sama, or do you favor this comp that wants to play a little bit more slowly, have Soaz and Febivin poking around in these fights? That's way harder to play. What do you favor, Frierson? Because it sounds like you're on board the XL hype train. I'm on the on board the XL hype train. I think if they can continue to kill Han Sama, that's all that matters. Dive him, kill him in these fights, and you're absolutely gonna win. Also, Jeskla is so strong right now. He went for the Sorg as well, so his magic damage is just gonna be cutting through Misfits. Got the Gunblade as well. Archangel's completed. Mura Mana, Iceborne, Gauntlet. We're starting to get to complete builds for some of the primary carries. Rapid Fire Cannon picked up for Han Sama at 31 minutes to complement his IEBT as well as the GA. And now XL are pushing into the mid lane. Whirling Death just to try and clear the wave, but look at the engage! XL pull the trigger! They He's died. dead! The low mobility Draven! They've killed him before Febivin can start his recall. That's another one onto Soaz! The fans at home believe in XL, and they're about to take the inhibitor. XL can go right on in whenever they want. Febivin wasn't with the rest of the team, and XL found the opening to get right in there. Cajal expects the combo is just deadly. 10,000 simulations at 50-50 odds give XL only 10 scenarios at making it into playoffs, and it only stays alive if they win this game right here, right now. Jeskla's dead! XL lose, Jeskla! Febivin returns! He manages to pick up one kill. XL needs to back away. They're very low. Febivin's gonna threaten a follow-up engage, and just as it looks like XL are about to do it, they have to back away. A look of pain on the face of Jeskla as he gets sniped out right there by Febivin. Febivin putting some stacks down on the Mezh eyes. He absolutely wants to take this game. Ladies and gentlemen, fans of the LEC, grab your family, grab your friends, because this game is heating up, and it is not done yet. How does this happen? Well, the answer is they just press their buttons. They go right on in there. Galio, Nocturne, Jarvan all layered on top of each other because they know Hansama has zero chance of escaping from that engage. That is the punish of the first pick, Draven, but then they get a little greedy, they overstay, and Febivin's able to get the pick on towards Jeskla and get control over the Baron buff. Kedril will have Paranoia out before Baron is secured. Special is nowhere near the team, but that's two members that are going to be able to catch out Febivin. He's running for his life. Baron's going so, so low. Febivin escapes. True Shot Barrage is late, and Misfits, they sneak the Baron from under XL's nose. The pick on to Jeskla was so pivotal. Misfits know he is dead. Special is in the side lane, and they have those two mountain drakes from earlier. They crush through that Baron buff. And now, once again, I'd love to see a vote because it's Misfits with complete control. Okay, we'll have to find out. So you're asking for the other side because we haven't prepped production. I mean, I'm telling you that right now, if we voted, the fans would be saying it's time for Misfits to win this game. They have control over the map. They have the Baron buff. They're going to look for another mountain drake and try to fight back against this XL composition because I got news for you, Trevor. Yes. Sama, he has his flash. His guardian angel is coming up very, very soon. If he can survive the initial engage, Misfits can win out. Oh, if he can survive the initial engage. Uh, Kajal and Kissing have made sure that has not happened. The last few fights, Kajal and Kissing, the two British guys on XL, Kissing the captain, we mentioned it earlier. Late game calling and decision making. He bears that responsibility, but it is up to expect and Kajal to find the targets. That dive buddy combo and obliterate Han Sama, but he's got that G up, as you mentioned. Exactly, and if you're a Misfits fan, you get concerned when you see them split up into the 1-3-1. Right now, you have Febivin top lane, Soaz bottom lane, and you know XL have all the tools to immediately force an engagement. So Misfits have to play so, so carefully here around XL's ability to just force the fight. And uh, the problem here for XL is they cannot make more mistakes in their shot calling or positioning on the rift. Yes, they have supers in the mid lane that'll buy XL some time, but against triple mountain drakes and all of the damage dealers on the side of Misfits, it is so easy for them to kill Towers, to kill Elder, to kill a, a Baron, and that means that there's no room for error, no mistakes in vision, no decision making in terms of who goes to which lane. It's so true. And Misfits, they have sort of two things on their mind right now. One is how much can we get with the remaining duration of the Baron buff? Because they only have about a minute and a half left. The other is if we can't break the base, or we can't end the game off this buff, which is more than likely, stall out for the Elder Dragon. Stall out for the next Baron buff coming up. Because if you can maintain control, especially around this area of the jungle where Misfits are perched right now, they can just continue continue to push in, force down these towers because Excel are going to be forced to go in, and it's very, very difficult. Six, one, and two. Febivin is pushing into this top tower. 
12 stacks on the Magi's. Hansama, 6, 4, and 4. He's pushing into the mid lane, and Soaz, 2, 3, and 8. He's down on the bottom lane. Teleports up for Soaz and Hansama. They're pushing back on those supers, and Febivin alone opens up Excel's base. He gets the tower. Very well done from him and Excel. They have to make a call. Where do you attack? Do you attack a side lane for an easy kill, or do you attack the central mass of the Misfits composition? They go bot, they get the kill! They've got themselves a kill into Soaz. Here comes the Paranoia. That's onto Gorilla. He's running for his life, but Febivin's gonna take the inhibitor in the top lane. Gorilla will buy some more time. He goes golden and Febby continues to put some pressure onto the Nexus turrets. Now Baron will be wearing off in 20 seconds. And this is a very difficult, precarious situation because Supers will be top, pushing into Excel's base. Exactly, and Excel, they might just want to take this mini wave in the mid lane. 35 seconds on Soaz and Gorilla. I don't think they can hard force down this mid lane. There's still three members of Misfits alive. The rest of their members are going to be coming up soon. In the mid oh, he comes in! Oh, take a look at that! Fevivit doesn't find the target! He flashes over the wall, but here comes Expect! Cataclysm comes down, Kassim follows on! That's three members of Misfits down! There's no Whoa. flash on Hansama and K Adriel, how did you stay alive? He lives with just a sliver right there. The whirling death, not quite enough. But it's Febivin who goes for a hero play, dies for his play. But in the end, it's enough to delay the, the base kill from Excel. And uh, the next game is match of the week. And we were wrong. This is the match of the week because <laughs> XL is just delivering 21 kills in 37 minutes. They have been behind in gold for a fair amount of this game, but they are finding crucial picks earlier in the game, which is set up the push. Oh man, Thubbevin tries his best, but Kajal has the spell shield and he doesn't respect that fact. And expect, he doesn't want to give him a chance to escape this fight, but look at all the ultimates they used to actually center down and finish off that kill. It meant with the members respawning on Misfits, they weren't comfortable with even the 5v4. Alright, so XL's composition is easy to understand. It needs to obliterate the Febin or the Hansama or the Soaz with that shotgun approach. Then, with the numbers advantage, win the rest of the team fight. We have Elder and Baron spawning in sync, so decision making will be key. What does Misfits have to do in this late game at 40 minutes to win the game? Well, they're going to be looking to control these objectives and specifically the Elder Dragon. When you have four elementals at your disposal, that thing hurts so, so bad right now. They can even decide to trade the objectives, but honestly, with the power that Soaz in the si has in the side lane, with their ability to now walk into the top river and sort of clear out jungle, I would like to see Misfits maybe play a bit slower, see if you can sneak off one member to solo away the Elder Dragon, because you have so many mountains, you can take it down pretty quickly and do it by yourself, or just look at the picks here if you are Soaz, because Misfits have control over the map. Cataclysm is very, very important in a potential team fight. Uh, with Soaz sitting on that Cataclysm uh, hijacked away from Expect. 30 seconds on both objectives as you've alluded to. Neither team's got the setup, but Misfits with the early vision means they are in advantage of the next few minutes. Exactly, and with the Super Minions going top lane, it makes it even more pivotal to focus on this Elder Dragon. You know members of Excel have to sort of stop these waves from pushing in. You can see right now it's Kasing and Jeskla on tag team duty to try and do it. But look at the minimap. There's so many wards here for Expect to look for a flank, to look for that perfect engage now on towards Hansama. Or they can just trade these objectives, which is going to be in favor of Misfits. Okay, super minions in the top lane in favor of Misfits. Teleport has already been channeled by Jeskla, and Soaz is pushing into the base. Elder Dragon is uh, already secured, picked up by Misfits. Baron is still alive. Misfits have the opportunity to steal it. Teleport is now coming in from Soaz. Paranoia to buy some time. Paranoia. Baron, rather, is picked up. Soaz is on the top. He has the Cataclysm. He's going to look for Jeskla. He's going to look for a target. Oh! That's a three-man Cataclysm, and he manages to stay alive. The GA will bring him back up. Here comes Hansana chasing all the way forward. Febivin is going to find one. That's another for Maxwell. Misfits aren't done yet. They're looking for Kasing. Cajal and Jeskal are running for their lives. Misfits may have just done it. They get themselves out there. They get themselves the ace. They will get themselves the win. Misfits take everything, and they have the minions here as well. Hansama teleports into the bottom lane after destroying XL in that team fight, and they have nothing but the victory set in their eyes. It is a heartbreaking defeat for XL Esports with this loss. They are eliminated from playoff contention. And XL were on the verge of their first 2-0 week. Right now, today, Misfits take the win of XL.
That is not the look of celebration on the faces of Misfits Gaming. They will be content with a win, but it is not celebration because that man on your screen expects an XL. They made them work for that. Oh man, Excel looked like they were gonna do it. They took down the mid lane inhibitor. So many very close opportunities to turning that game, but it was Misfits. Now with a cold analytical approach after finishing this game, they were eventually able to set up the team fight after picking up the Elder Dragon. They knew they had the trump card. They had the scaling when they could pick up that objective and they were able to get that beautiful flank by Soaz to shut down and finish off the game. What a turn of events, what a game. And you know what I love about games like this? What do you love? You and I get carried away, we get to have a lot of fun, we get to celebrate in game. But when we finish it, and we get to discuss the implications, what it means, you see Misfits now congratulating XL and trying to understand in the playoff race how close, how competitive XL looked this weekend but it was just a little too late into spring. And huge question marks for Misfits and their potential strength looking forward. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of the thing. I feel like a lot of our teams have had this sort of mid-season dive, and now they're trying to pick themselves back up and make it on in there. Unfortunately for Excel, again, it was a little bit too little, too late for them. But for Misfits, they are still finding the wins that they need. They are still very much in that playoff picture. But as you get forward to week eight, week nine, those quarterfinals, you need to have better play. You need to have top-notch play and not look like you're almost gonna fall down to a team like Excel. Misfits Gaming are now seven wins, seven losses. You can see Hussein having a chat to the players. Misfits are tied in the standings with Fnatic, with SK, with Schalke. But crucially, Misfits have got the head-to-head -head of Fnatic 1-0, the head-to-head -head over SK 2-0. And these are gonna be very, very pivotal as we get closer to week nine, as we get closer to the race for playoffs. But man, I just feel so heartbroken for XL because there were so many moments where it just felt like they had this game. Oh, they absolutely did. And I mean, they had the composition that could just go in and force on towards Han Sama. And it worked two, three, four times during that game. But you then had hero performances from the rest of Misfits to hold on, from Soaz on the Silas, from Febvin, just delaying the inevitable push from Excel into their base. That delay gave room for Han Sama to eventually step up and be the carry Misfits needed him to be. Keep getting glimpses of Febvin playing to strengths that we haven't seen for several years, you know? showing up when he needs to. I can tell you right now, by the way, that the whole time we've been chatting, I can actually still see both Hans Sama and Gorilla, as well as Hussein Fumandu on stage, busy chatting, discussing the game, because, boy, there's a lot to talk about. Look, um, we do have to just look at at least one replay. I believe it's gonna be the final fight here. We'll pull that up onto your screen and just talk about so as he had the Cataclysm, and it was enough disruption to help Misfits win. Yeah, it was a great flank here. And the key thing for Misfits is that when they're the ones initiating, no one can touch Han Sama. This man is full HP with a black shield on top of him. There's going to be no stopping this guy. And you have Vibivin also on the flank, making all the plays happen. And honestly, it's a four for one fight right there. So nicely done for Misfits because, again, they had the advantage of that Elder Dragon backing them up. They absolutely did. Uh, quick update, we will be joined by Misfits Cage, uh, Coach Hussein Amuzi for picks and bans ahead of our match of the week. That's after the break. And of course, if Origin lose, we have five teams tied at seven and seven. I know I sound like a broken record, but it is insanely exciting how close the race for playoffs is. Hold that thought. Key player of the game at Lolly Sports. So is Febvin Hunt Summit. Go. I was going to say, you know, you, you might be able to say every game counts, Trevor. I'm so proud of you. It makes me so happy when the young ones learn. <laughs> um, how do you vote for player of the game? Uh, not easily. Okay. I, I think actually, I would go Soaz. I think his early game impact, all of those roams to mid lane were really what put uh, Misfits in a position to get the win, and then the flank at the end really set them up for the victory. Well, I think I'm going with Febivin because he's sitting by with Law to be interviewed. Thank you very much, Trevor, and thank you, Febivin, for joining me. Oh, wow, that looks messy from you guys. I mean, I saw Hussein talking to you after the game. You looked pretty serious. What did he tell you? Sorry, what, what was it? <laughs> what did Hussein tell you after the game? Um, I mean, he told us that, you know, we all played pretty bad individually and we really have to step it up and we have to play even more solo queue and, uh, you know, review our games better. And uh, he also told us that we 
the, uh, we stayed pretty calm in the game, so that was good. So just some positive and, uh, you know, enforcing feedback. Positive and negatives, and you won in the end. I wonder, though, that was a messy game from you guys, and I feel like you had the draft to take it sooner. I mean, having Silas, LeBlanc, first picking Draven, what went wrong in the game for you guys to take so long to grab the win? Uh, I mean, there was just a lot of, like, uh, individual mistakes and, you know, bad calls that led to us being behind, like the Herald call, you know, we died three people, and even, like, level one we died, I think, so... Yeah, I think we just had a pretty bad start and we actually did a good job coming back. But I feel in general our games are pretty messy, it's not only this one, it's uh, kind of disappointing. We talked about this before, we know like you're kind of an all-star team. Do you feel like you maybe have so much strong voices in the team that it makes it hard for you to decide who can take the call at the right time? Well, you would think that our team has like a lot of voices, like strong voices, but in the game, we don't really actually like, so it's still difficult for us, you know, to make the right calls. And obviously it's, it's different in uh, the different stages of the game because I feel like in the mid late game, we know what to do pretty well, but in the early game, it's still, we're still figuring it out, you know, and uh, it just depends on the game state basically. So I would say in the early game, we're struggling, but mid late, we are, yeah. we are the veterans you know you're popping off and we can see the stats behind you and in front you uh, in front of you on the screen i gotta ask the play of race is what counts the most right now and looking at the schedule you have ahead of you you're gonna be facing Fnatic, who's performing better now schalke who's underperforming splice who's well basically doing splice things and g2 who looks unbeatable except of today so what do you think about your schedule so far to make it to play off uh, yeah, it's going to be really hard, like we are 7-7 seven, seven right now, you know, and the last four games really matter and we're actually playing against good op opponents, you know, so right now, you know, it just depends how hard do we, re like how much do we really want it, you know, like we are not even secured into playoffs, uh, maybe when everyone thought we would be, but like we have to, you know, step it up even more and we've been showing a really bad performance at least the last weeks and uh, really inconsistent, so the last two weeks and the preparation to playoffs, hopefully if we get there, has to be way better because we are basically not good right now, you know. I mean, I don't want to go into playoffs knowing we are not going to be the best team, you know, because why do you go to playoffs when you know that when you're not the best team, you know, then you're just going to lose eventually, right? So that will feel even worse. Feels pretty negative listening to you. I'm really sorry to hear that. And the worst part is you know what's going wrong with the team. So how do you fix this? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard. I mean, everyone is kind of underperforming and uh, I feel like we have mindsets that need to be really improved, but yeah, we're kind of struggling and just individual play and mindset is just lacking right now. And we got the win today, it's 7-7, you know, it's, it's fine. Like, I still have hope, you know, everyone has hope. Uh, it's just gonna be, we just need to be really strict with ourselves going forward because else we're not gonna win you know and find another mindset i wish you good luck on that and thank you very much thank for you. your insights we're gonna take a short break and when we come back it's gonna be match of the week vitality versus origin stay tuned guys <laughs> 